can only remember the voices, you know. You know, that harmony that is, you cannot get it anyway in the world. They're totally different from what anyone knows from the School of Music. They are role models for women in this country in terms of what they've been through. The, the crowd just got crazy and start dancing and uh, this happens around the world. We're talking about the, the legends of our African music. Oh, they were marvellous. They were beautiful, as if the youngsters, how oh, those mamas used to do it. Now for me, they are the custodians, in a way, of that form of music. I start to form this group, my Hotel Queens, in 1963. From there, up to today, our Hotel Queens, the name is still number one. When I say my Hotel Queens, I really know that you are talking about Hilda Klubatla, you are talking about Nobis I know that you are talking about Mildred. I don't know what to say, you know, there are so many things. I can talk about my hotel, I mean, I can talk for the whole day, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to say, I don't know what to say. <laughs> We performed in New York. We performed in LA. We performed in New Orleans. Sweden. Japan. Egypt. My God, you name them. German. We played with uh, Janet Jackson, Commodores, Stevie Wonder. Rachel, the Salificator. Salificator. My God, there's so many. In a South African musician, especially in the 70s and 80s, there was the cultural boycott. And I think this became a very difficult time for South African music. You know, it was a very violent, very uh, strict kind of regime that they grew up in. Africa. Malupaganyisu pondolwayo Izwa imitanda zoyetu Gosi sikele latina Lusa polwayo Mure na buluka si chabasa hesu Ufedi sedin twali matwenye ho Mure na buluka si chabasa hesu Ufedi sedin twali matwenye ho Usi buluke Usi buluke Usi buluke si chabasa Usi buluke si chabasa Hesu Sichabasa, South Africa, South Africa. I'm 60 years of age. I'm 63 now. In January, I will be 62. You remember that during the, the early 60s when we started, we, we, we were not wearing the Zulu costumes that no, we were wearing. No, no, no. By the way, what do we, we used to wear? To, to dress trousers. We were performing with jeans and the T-shirts. My God, we were wearing d expensive things. We were wearing things like you call the Pringle, Pringle uh, t Valentine's. shirts and Valentines and hush puppies. Hush puppies. <laughs> and uh, my God, we were expensive from the yeah. beginning. We were beautiful and those are beautiful clothing. 
in France, we, we heard that African music was becoming quite popular. So when we were invited in 1987, we decided to change so that they must see our culture. So we just decided to wear this uh, Zulu tradition. We wanted the, the international to know, people to know what do we wear, what our custom is, the costumes that we wear. That was the first day when they were telling us that we were going to, to Nice. Nice is now in, in France, in Europe. We were like, my God, it was the first time that we would be getting into a, a, a play. See ourselves at the airport, it was like, it's a new world. People came and heard this new music from South Africa with such energy. It was packed, and we didn't expect that because we know that we are singing Zulu. Performing for a white audience only. It was like, my God, and seeing uh, the, the white audience so excited and so much dancing and so much enjoying the type of music that we are doing. It was like, my God. The indigenous African market is the fastest growing segment of the South African record market. Going to, to the Aeta Cinema to see them live for the first time. I think being there, sitting in the back row, and just seeing the performance and the local audience just giving them waves of applause was, was fantastic for me. It was that type of music they playing in Patranga those days. It was a big thing. I mean, Maslatini, he was popular together with the girls. So the way they were dancing on the stage, everybody was crazy to see them performing there on the stage. I still think, I still think they've got a lot of life going in them. I mean, I don't know if you've seen them perform recently. They just, I mean, uh, Japan was amazing. You know, you had these three ladies get on stage and you know, people who've never heard of them before. We sold out the CDs in Japan. You know, people just really, really love them. This name, we've really worked for this name, the Mautela Queens. You know, the way we promoted in the olden days, we, we were not doing like these guys are doing like TV, radio. We would wake up as early as five o'clock in the morning, go to the bus terminus, go and dance each and every terminus where people are full in the morning going to work. This is how we promoted our music, from five until seven o'clock. Then after that, we go to the studio. After that, three o'clock in the evening, in the afternoon, the people are coming back from work. Here we are again, back to the terminus again, going to do exactly the same thing, dancing again and again, again, again. No pay, no nothing. This is why I say when you talk about Mautela Queens, I know exactly what it is and how we made this name Mautela Queens. They're wonderful people. They, they're experiencing what they're saying. They understand the touring situation. They've been around the world. Um, they've just been great ambassadors to South African music. The first recording of, of Matatini Maut and Mautella Queens and Makonatota Band, there was a song called We Are Uzo Umoya, Do You Hear the Wind? And then that was a big hit. And then so we started touring. Touring Deben, Cape Town, whatever, Grahamstown, Craddock, Gallo Borders, uh, then. And then to tour. Yeah, I first saw them early 70s in Nelspray. There's a place called Matafeni Stadium. I went there and I didn't have money to sort of like go in. I squeezed myself in. I didn't care the security and stuff like that. I had to go under the warp wire, you know. But I sneak through and managed to stand in front of the stage and see them dancing. I still got the, some scar. Yeah, and I love that one. Admission was only one rent. When you come, you are coming to see the show, admission one rent. So every day was packed. We performed around here in South Africa, the whole country, the neighboring uh, uh, countries. We performed so much from 1965 up till 1987 when we, we got our first invitation internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, this group was formed in 1964 and has been together since then. It's 
a mixture of it's a Zulu bread mixed of maize and meal meal cooked together and our grandmothers, that dish, they call that mpakang. So hence, that is why we said our music is mpakang, because it's a mix, mixture of different sounds of South Africa. It's a mixture of uh, bube, mixture of uh, marabi, marabi, pata pata. It's a, it's, a, it's a mix. We take some, some chords, take it from the ro uh, rock and roll. And a little bit from... American style a little bit, this bit, not too much. And then mix with the traditional, it's a traditional music, like these Zulu dances. So when we started this group, uh, there was not much of Mpakanga exposure. So we had to introduce, to, to, to strengthen it, because it was the, the right time for it. Jumping, all sorts of jive, the side. The rhythmic frameworks as well in which that particular style of, this particular style of Mbatkanga, um, if you listen to the, the bass guitar and the drums in that music and all the various songs, that very innovative. You would never find anything remotely echoed in any other form anywhere in the world. It's an, it's an amazing, it's an amazing music. The way I'm playing bass in it now when I play, I learned it on the wrong way. Because you're supposed to play up, down, up, down, up, like this. I struck it up. So it is having more uh, punch. And then I like to play the off beats. Joseph was the best bass guitarist up till he, he was the best, when, more special when coming into our music. He was a brother to us, and uh, we loved him. Everyone right around the globe, whenever we perform, everybody stands up and do their thing. Be white, black, you know, name them. Even in Japan, Japan is itself, the Japanese people enjoy our music very much. It appeals to everybody. The beat is right, they don't understand the lyrics, they don't understand what we are saying, but they just go for it. I mean, it shows that it's the right thing. Mpakanga is the king of music. We used to enjoy Mpakanga. Even now, we still enjoy it. That's the dance that is uh, original, original dance. Mpakanga, that's original. It's really South African, but it mixes both you know, cultures. The way they dance. They were the quintessential Mbakanga band who had developed a format of the live energetic choreographies, singing and dancing. It's a sound that I think is disappearing a bit. It's a kind of the, the kind of harmonies they choose are not your conventional R and B pop harmonies, they, they, the uh, real African harmonies, and they do it almost automatically. To describe it, it's like you've got to understand the kind of music that influence it, those things they influence them <laughs> that's Baganga. they went out there they toured their sound was unique they had a guy who i rate probably one of the best producers south africa's ever seen in West Nkosi. West was out there hustling the whole time, putting them together, pushing them a little bit further, out there getting the band right, and he read the market so well. But the bass drum sounds too much. You can bring it down. <laughs> What I mean too much, and then party like we play like I look at it, I'm going to see. 
Max Mangwani was a, a real tune maker. He would say, we've got to new, record a new album. Everybody must try hard to compose the new song. He will take the rhythm guitar and then start putting the tune now. West died first. He got a car accident. At the time when we were at the funeral after burying West, on the same time we got a, we got a call that uh, Max Mankwane passed, passed away because he was sick. A lot of artists they were there to bury him, to bury Max. But the biggest one was of West because it went we have uh, the fire the stadium for everybody. Those were really difficult times for us. Times we, we were like, my God, this is the end of Mawotela Queens, and we didn't know as to whether we're coming or going. We grew up together with them. In fact, the whole band, everybody, we grew up together and believed in one another. We were like a family. So, you know, when you believe in one another and when you're a family, should you miss one person, it's like, my God, now everything is gone. Uh, Hilda, Nobesutu, and Mildred. They split from our hotel of Queens and then go to Hamilton Zimandi. Robert Papa said to me, you are in love with Nobesut. Robert Papa gave me money. He gave me about uh, 1,005 to go and lobola Nobesut. So that um, I must have a word on Nobesut that you are my wife. You are not going with Hilda and Mildred there. So he paid. Yeah, he did pay. He paid Lobola to Nobesut. But well, well, well. Things didn't work out. Nobesuta said, now I'm the guitar player and then you dance to my music. Say, okay, fine. We carried on for some time. I'm the one who like broke the whole thing because I went and I had to go and get children and to bring them up. Yeah, she's a very strict mom and loving mom. Yeah, she spoils us. Though I'm married, I get spoiled. Every time she comes back from the trip, I know um, I'm gonna have something, you know. So the two ladies also, they were like, yeah, since Hilda is not there, so we can't be going on. We'll wait for her to come back. Until when it comes the time now, we, we made it in Europe, and then we went back to them. No, Ultimately, we were the queens and we were the guys who the name, we made the name and uh, the other ladies had to like go on a recording until we had to come back again and went on with the name. When my father said to my mother, he said, no, leave the boy alone, the boy is going up. So we went to a wedding, and then we started singing there with my friends, with my normal voice. But we seated there the whole night until the morning, busy singing. So my voice was already burnt out, but my voice was very, very, very rough at that moment. When I came home, I knocked at the door. My mom was like, hey, who was that? He said, it's me. I said, who is it? I said, Mama, it's me, my Latin. He said, he, what happened to your voice? He said, and I said, I don't know. 
then he went straight to my father's city. And your son is sick. I don't know what happened to his boys. And when my father said to my mother, he said, no, leave the boy alone, the boy is going now. That was the beginning of my horrible voice. Somebody, somebody see looking at my door. Ooh, Somebody, somebody is looking at my door. Somebody is looking at my door. He was known, of course, as the groaner, the line of Soweto. And my first experience of him live was at the Oeta Cinema in uh, Soweto. And that must have been probably in the early 70s. The band was so rehearsed in those days that it was just magic on stage. It was just an unbelievable performance. Simon Matatini Kabinde is South Africa's king of the groaners, the lion of Soweto, and the man with a voice like a goat. There was never a moment in the entire show when anybody was standing still. Because he was roaring like a, like a lion, his voice was so powerful. People have tried to imitate his voice and they cannot, you know, do as he does. We were surprised about his voice. He had this magic voice, you know, which we had never heard before. Everything that I am, uh, I copied from, from, from the old man. He was a very quiet man. In terms of when I say quiet, he wasn't a person that was always loud and you knew that he was a star. He was a very quiet person. See him on stage, he's totally different. He dances, he jumps, he does a lot of things that we can't do it anymore. He was a lion of Africa. Once he's on stage, he just rolls, rolls, and the queens, and they, they'll do their thing. Matlatini's performance was, uh, was outstanding. He, he had the love of music from deep down. Since 1968 up to now, I've never seen a popular man like Matlatini. Matlatini was a wonderful person. I mean, he was a character all on his own. He, he likes uh, Flosham and he likes to just like to stroll, like maybe he was working in 5th, 7th uh, Street in, in New York. And just like, hola, as my. <laughs> I remember one day when I saw him in Botswana playing there. Some of the people, they were just following him like this. They want to touch him that we want to hear this man singing because we hear his voice over the radio, but we want to see him live, personal now. You know? <laughs> We estimate it accounts for approximately 20% of the total music market, which is about 30 million rand a year. Mavutela has achieved a substantial slice of this cake in its five years. At the moment, it accounts for approximately 20%, or its productions account for 20% of the sales of our record company. Uh, if I convert that into unit figures, that means the equivalent of over 1,000,007 singles and over 75,000 LPs per year. I used to get a standard rate of £8.50 a side. There was no royalties. We didn't know anything about royalties. We were just recording and get paid. It wasn't just in South Africa, it was around the world where there was no royalty systems in place. Today artists are looked after a lot more. It hurts me. Uh, Galo gave us nothing during that time and it really made millions and millions. Whatever they've done, there's nothing that they can compare with Mawatela Queens. Nobody comes next to us in, in terms of selling, in terms of performance. The, the market was very uh, singles orientated. First of all there were the 78s and then there were singles. A lot of the artists only made singles in those days. The royalty systems were non-existence. Uh, only I think these came through in the early 60s. My hotel, Queens!
the group started to be big and Gallo decided now this is the time I mustn't lose this group so I must give them the contract they must sign. We didn't know that we were not supposed to sign. One of us, two of us can read, but we are not worried about reading the contract. We're just excited that we've got a contract and then we're touring. Gallo is doing very well for us. He's taking us Gadman, Cape Town, wherever we want. So we didn't bother as much as that. He told us that it's 3% out of 90, not 100. How can we share? 3% being 10. Those are the bloody monsters. They destroy um, everything because they don't know. They know zero about music. As the Buzz of Boya album came out, I made the decision to leave Gala. I spoke to all the artists that I'd been associated with for 20 years and I had never any intention of leaving with the artist. You know, I needed to go and, 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 and start what I believe was building a record label. Um, and the Queens took me by complete surprise. I remember meeting with them in Melville and saying, you know what, look guys, you've just, uh, just released an album, but I can't, I, mean, I have to leave. I now really need to make the decision. And they, in unison, didn't even discuss it with them. They just said, if you go, we're going. That's why we ended up saying, if Antos is not here, then that means our thing won't work with Gallo. So we ended up saying to if it happens that you leave Gallo, then we're going with you. Oh my God, okay, I mean, you know, this is the Mautilla Queens coming with me. I mean, you know, I'm just this little record label, one person, um, you know, and here are these legends. Um, but there was no way I was gonna say no. It didn't take a lady like Antos Taylor. She was one of the same quality, but she believed in that, you know, because she was more like a friend to us. She would ask questions. She wanted to know more about Matilda Queens. And then she, you know, she's taking them, you know, because it's not because of, like, the money-making thing, you know, because of respect. You know, in a record company, the new artists been signed, some come, some stay. Uh, some want to move on, and I think uh, from Gallo's side, that they were with us for a number of years. They enjoyed their stay with us, and uh, it was time to move on. Fortunately, I may say anything about Gallo, but let me say it, up to this day, I still thank them for what they did. Matatini was buried. The money that buried Matatini, the, the, the Gallo company, they, would, they called Matatini's daughter to say, don't worry, we are there. We'll see to it that we, we finish up with Matatini's funeral. Something that uh, always happened to me, and then there's a feeling that uh, sometimes uh, it comes, that feeling comes, and then I felt like crying, and then hearing the guitar, is the, the guitars from, from, from my shoulders, it's like a fire behind my back, and the melodies of, of the ladies behind me. That man used to sing lovely with he with his team. He's our star, really. He put he really put us into the map. That's what I like about Masatin. I'll never forget him. Never. Even my children, I'm going to tell them about him. His death closes a chapter in the musical history, but opens a new one on copyright issues. He will not be remembered only as a man who's put Mpakanga music on the world map, but he has put pride in Africa. When Matlatini died, I, how would I say that? It was painful. More, it was painful with West, it was painful with, Matlat, with Marx, it was worse with Matlatini. He got ill in Seattle in the United States offered a performance. He, he suffered with sugar diabetes, which, which was not easy. And we had to fly him back from Seattle to, to South Africa. We took him straight into to the um, Prentice Clinic where he, he spent about six weeks, you know, trying to recuperate and giving him the best possible treatment. It was terrible to see him, uh, you know, losing weight and not being able to, to, to perform, and especially those wonderful concerts that we used to all acknowledge uh, were one of the most exciting concerts in South African music.
We were like, my God, what are we going to do without him? He was the center, he was the focus. He lived for music and died for music. Chabon Beke attended, attended went to the funeral. So that he was celebrated in, in foreign countries. We sang with Matatin for a long time and his voice was like, we're so, we're so much used to Matlatini's voice that really we, we thought we, we won't make it without Matlatini's voice. He, Matlatini's voice was unique and it was really important to us. Matlatini, whilst it was a very emotional period for them, it kind of like out of the ashes came the queens. They came to the fore. We pushed the shows in New York. It was wonderful. It was like he is with us and nobody suited to like go on groaning, singing like Matlatini and the people enjoyed it. That's the time that I remember very well. The Queen's Hall, I knew all the way that they'll do, they'll still carry on without Matlatini. I just see up to now, they are doing well without Matlatini. It shows that music, it's in their hearts, you see, yeah. It was like, my God, now everything is dead. Uh, but here we are, still going on, and now we are used to be all by ourselves. Mimpi na oe rata ngeo isa itla oe na itla mona kama hotela Queens Mingo. When I would solo their voices, I would hear something that really was unique. And there's a blend between the three voices that is so rare that you'll hear singers that they almost complement each other like a chord. I'll say just listen to them because there's no way that you can say these harmonies are like uh, they are created in this they they've, they've got their own way and uh, according to their songs but there's so many different things and genders of music in this part of the world that they're, they're unique in the way they, they they do their stuff it's a sound that I think is disappearing but it's a kind of the, the kind of harmonies they choose are not your conventional R&B um, uh, pop harmonies, they, they, they're real African harmonies and they do it almost automatically. They've got antique voices, you know, if you could tape them and have them in your house and whenever you're depressed or something, you can play their voices, then you'll be revived, you'll be good. Those kind of harmonies, you can't find them. Those are just few people who knows them. And I just heard them singing Kozi Sikilele um, a cappella and this light went on in my head of, oh, that's what I've been missing is hearing just their voices without hundreds of instruments. The sonic beauty of just those three voices together. How on earth uh, do three people, you know, sing it's such a beautiful harmony that um, it's so sweet, yet you want to bring it or try to modernize it. And even when, even when you do, it's not enough. It's unity, to respect one another. I think this is the secret for them. They fit hand in glove with each other. I'm sure anybody who's worked with them sees how powerful they are as a threesome. The, the three of them, they will do it very easily. But if one of them is sick, and then they try, you know, the two of them come in the studio, it, it doesn't work. They are my real sisters, and without them, more especially when it comes to work, without them, there's nothing that I can do, and without me also, there is nothing that they can do. They love each other, so we learn to love them as well. We are just like sisters, no more friends, but sisters, or family. They understand each other, or maybe they love each other so, so much that they can't part, they will carry on. 
Sikana nje ukala kutu kusi tata na njenga bangani. Kutu wa manje, sisi fana na my sisters. Ngoba noba umu ye velelewe ibi problem, siya wazu kumata, siya ngleti sana. Yes. Sisi fana nje nabu sisi siya ngleti sana, ugeo yonki nto yetu. Sisi chwa hele ene futu, ngoba sitali sinda uonye, songi skate sningi sitali sinda uonye. No masi ya alwa, kisasa se peli. We are sisters now. Forever, for as long as we live, and for as long as uh, God is still carrying us, we definitely be will be going on and on. is a lot. Her prayer life has also affected the members of the group because, you know, when you sing, just singing because of talent, it's different. But if you sing with that ability that you receive in prayer, you receive from God, it, it, it does have an, an effect in one way or another. I believe the, the other ladies, that's how we helped. They could, you know, feel or see the change in her life and they also decided to belong to other churches. Thank God that at, at the end of the day I became a Christian. I'm much safer in church than you know being wandering outside and not being a Christian and not attending church. I really say thank God. He picked me up from a pit from Nowhere from the darkness, right deep down the pit. I'm fortunate that he picked me up from then. But now that I found you, let, let me not, not miss you anymore. Jesus. Jesus. I was a drunkard. <laughs> drunkard. I used to drink a lot and nobody could tell me up when I'm drunk. I see myself at the box or a shot, a big shot. But since I left that thing behind, ultimately at the end of the day, Hallelujah. they were born again and they are now, they can now also feel the difference and now they know what is it to be born again than to be a Christian, just, than just to be an ordinary Christian. They can feel the difference. But since, since I changed to God, everything is coming all right. It's going like this. Right now, they're giving us a typical example of the power of prayer. It always brings you back. To be born again brings you back again. You, you may do mistakes or you may speak the, the other way around, but at the same time, something brings you back again to say, by the way, remember who you are. If God has given you a talent, as long as you use it in accordance to his will, there's nothing wrong about it. So what God has placed in you, make sure that is developed whilst they're still on earth. Hey, they were lively, and, but they're old, but they can jive, they can do it. They can do it most of the time. You see those mamas, they can move as if they are still the youngsters. Gazette. Wow, I love the Gazette. It was really a hit. Up to this day, it is still one of the best songs from the Mautela Queen. You know, when, when that, that one came up, that was, oh, that's us, you know, and it just like crossover. In Paris, they even changed the lyrics into French. Oh, they sing French. In terms of the Paris to Soweto album, because it took them right to the top again. Um, but it's a song that is a global song. Um, I'd worked with Abed Ngobeni, who was the original composer of Gazette. So 
I was very interested to hear the different way they had treated it to the way Abed had done it. It is a song that has been done and covered by a number of artists, but it is a song that truly can only be done by the Mautela Queens. Till now, on stage, we sing that song. All the youngsters, they stand up and dance. It's our hit everywhere. I still play it on a regular basis. They put it on. I was at the Cape Jazz Festival earlier this year. They performed. And it was really, you know, the, the crowd just got crazy and started dancing. And uh, this happens around the world. I, I, I love that song. When, you know, every time when it plays, uh, we get to dance. Everyone get to dance at home. Yeah, we, we really dig that one. Yeah. They are doing a wonderful job. Whatever you do as an, as an artist, it might take some time, but people are listening. And it's such a great um, honor and gratitude that when the president of the country at the time honors you. This distinguished South African and international friend will honor today are fit and proper persons to receive these awards because they occupy an important place among us. Both Hilda and I simultaneously got a call from um, the offices of the president um, saying that they had been you know, put forward for this, this award. No, we're very, very happy because we didn't expect that the government knows us, that we started, we started a long time ago. The president gave us three medals and, and scrolls that are written da mm. down that we thank you, would like to say thank you very much for the Mautela Queens for, for being so long in our in music industry for our country. Thank you. To me, when the president gave them that, it was like, wow, this is the best. You know, you know giving someone one of the person still alive and say thank you, you deserve it. Doesn't matter whether it's money, but that recognition. To be honest with you, I, I could not see clearly because of the joy, the tears in my eyes, my sisters. F phones were ringing, you know, left and right from London, from uh, where my sister is in America. Every time when I look at that, I would, you know, tears, you know, run down my cheeks and uh, I say, Mom, wow, you and the Queens, you did it. You really did, and you're still going strong. I, you know, even now, I pray in my heart that they can go more greater than they are. Since we were in Japan with a uh, not my Laika, and who's this other lady? Mafiki Zolo. Mafiki Zolo. Mafiki Zolo, yes, yes. They were like, my God, it's unbelievable. This Glen is, the, you know, yeah. it, it's, just, it's a matter of who's promoting you and who is doing what. Mafiki Zolo, Mafiki Zolo. That's an old rhythm. It's not a new style rhythm. Those are our old, old rhythms that were used by us. This is such a rare treat that we have you in South Africa, let alone in the Oboma studio. Thank you. Ah, so is it good to be home? It's so good to be at home, you know, it's unbelievable, in fact. Oh, you know, nice. to see ourselves performing and performing and performing at home, it's like, my God, it's, it's exciting and it's really unbelievable. My God, our years, you see us on stage, it's like, my God, no, this is unbelievable. They can't be this old. Yes. Where do you get all of that energy? The youth that saw us performing on these few shows that we had, they are screaming. They are like, my God, the energy that these grannies are having. The choreographer, they, told, we, they, they come to us and tell us, that, no, sorry, we can't. Where do you get all the energy from? We can't, we, we can't do it. that we have, it's a God's gift. Uguti abantu abakolo ngeminyaga yetu. Ngeminyaga yetu into esienzayo abantuana abakolo uguyenza. 
Igo logu benga believe from 64 until now, we are still strong. This is just some of the queens. As sick on a panda when we beg a pambi. Salangishing it in a year away to Slogan. Utu Muya Lima Lum Lens. A Lima Lunyao, which would go be said Pedi, the Ganga Mautela, who's got a massa pill and his son, Sazo Kubek. We prove them that we've got genuine voices. It's a gift from God and nobody's going to take it away from us. We've just, as you know, recorded another album which takes them a little bit more to their roots. They're touring non-stop, you know, both locally and internationally. Still, still got that passion, they still got that fire, the voices are still together and they still got that magic. They still got that magic here. When I love me, I wear... The stars only shine by night, right? But you're talking about the, the legends that don't have to wait for the night to shine. I would say one who have never seen Mahotela Queens on a stage doing their thing is missing a lot out of those ladies. They are fantastic. There are three women who are just the most amazingly um, wonderful people, strong mothers, um, performers, businesswomen, um, and, and I'm really, really proud to be associated with them. They know what they've got to do, they know they've got to attend the sound checks, they know they've got to do the interviews and television interviews, and they're always there. You, you, you don't have a, a problem with them. And they're just lovely, lovely people. Today I think they're all grannies, uh, but they're still touring the world and uh, spending a lot of time outside South Africa, not inside South Africa. They are ambassadors because they go all around the world performing and they, and they perform with such pride. They perform in traditional outfits. They are actually speaking and they are the culture of South Africa. This is the first time that we did so many shows in, 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 in South Africa like the way we did them this time after years. Carla. Mm. Beautiful. That's my hotel. Nice. Like the motel. Yeah. Then from there, don't forget when you're telling me, you can tell the audience, If you've got it, if you're born with it, there's nothing that's going to change. Because that, what they've got, it was not from a teacher from the school teaching them. No, they were born with it. So whether 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they'll carry on one way until the last day. We make sure that we give the audience the best and we give them the best. Mali, who know who will be the man about you, who will be.